Welcome to this section in Mastering Elasticsearch 5.0 entitled Production Cluster. In this section, we get into the details of what's necessary to set up a healthy, safe, and secure production cluster in Elasticsearch. More specifically, we cover three areas. First, we look at nodes, the fundamental building blocks of an Elasticsearch cluster, along with what makes a production cluster a production cluster. Next, we go into the basic configurations and to do's for setting up a production cluster. And finally, we go into more advanced settings and configurations. So let's get to it. Welcome to this video in Mastering Elasticsearch 5.0 entitled Setting Up a Production Cluster. Nodes are the cornerstone of Elasticsearch. Each time you fire up an instance of Elasticsearch, you've created a node. Nodes come in different types, each of which serves a different purpose. Master eligible nodes are the nodes that, for all intents and purposes, keep Elasticsearch going. Master nodes control the cluster. There are also data nodes, which hold data, facilitate search operations, aggregations, and everything you do when interfacing with data, such as CRUD operations. If the desire is to transform data before adding it to an index, Elasticsearch provides ingest nodes. Client nodes, or coordinating only nodes, are nodes without master, data, or ingest functions. Basically, these nodes handle search requests to the cluster. The advantage of such nodes is that they act as smart load balancers. Finally, Tribe nodes facilitate search operations across multiple clusters. We'll be looking deeper into the first three node types. Again, a given node can serve one or more purposes. For instance, a master node can hold data and perform associated operations. Due to the resource intensive nature of data nodes, combined with the need for a stable master node to ensure cluster health, it is highly recommended that, while in production, the roles between the dedicated master eligible nodes and dedicated data nodes be split. In production, there should be dedicated data nodes and dedicated master eligible nodes. The good news is that while the data nodes are resource intensive, master nodes are not. As a result, not much additional overhead is generated by running this scheme. Note that by default, all nodes are master eligible, data, and ingest nodes. Making dedicated nodes require that you adjust the Elasticsearch.yml configuration file within each node. So, to set up a dedicated master node, for example, as you can see here, you set the node.master to true while setting the node.data and the node.ingest to false. Once done and restarted, this node becomes a dedicated master node. Creating a dedicated data node simply involves only setting node.data to true while setting node.master and node.ingest to false in the configuration file of each node that you wish to be a dedicated data node. If you wish to create a dedicated ingest node, again, Set the node.master and the node.data to false while setting the node.ingest to true. Also, with the ingest node, you also need to set the search.remote.connect configuration to false. And finally, if you want to create a client node, you simply have to set all the node.master, node.data, and node.ingest to false on the node that you wish to be the client node. Okay, here we can see um, that I've set up this particular node to be a dedicated master node. As you can see in the configuration file, set node.master to true, um, node.data is false, as well as node.ingest. Also, you can see here, I also have the code for a dedicated data node, the dedicated ingest node, but they're all commented out. When setting up a production cluster, it's really hard to estimate what type of initial infrastructure you'll need 
to get going. The makers of Elasticsearch always remark, it depends. This makes a lot of sense because it does depend. Everyone's use case is unique. Here, we'll look at a quick and dirty example of requirements. First, the assumptions. Let's assume you will ingest daily data volume of around 15 gigs and that you want to maintain this data for up to, let's say, a year before archiving it, which will require up to about 10 terabytes of disk space, give or take. Note that there are many different possible variations and in an ideal world, while within budgetary constraints, you'd want an infrastructure that can accommodate initial requirements with scalability, of course. Here is a suggested setup, assuming three dedicated master nodes, two data nodes, and two client nodes. We're looking at three servers in total. 96 gigs of RAM only needs to be in two of three servers. As the third server is added so that we can have a third dedicated master node available. In the other two servers, there should be one dedicated master node and one dedicated data node. Also, there should be one client node as well. And if you need to add more servers for data nodes, for example, you can scale out by adding a server with up to 64 gigs of RAM for an additional data node. Of course, that includes 20 terabytes of disk space. Finally, let's look at the heap. Allocating 30 gigs of heap for data node, 4 gigs for the master node heap, 4 gigs for the client node heap should do the trick. But each use case is different, and later on I'll touch on it more with the balancing act that you have to play with the heap. You don't want the heap to be too high. You don't want it set too low. If it's too low, then you're going to have out of memory errors. And if it's too high, you can have long latency due to garbage collection and your cluster could completely freeze. 